hey, um, look at this. A video where it's <laughs> I'm actually not driving and I can look at the camera. Um, hi. Um, I just want to talk through something I'm still, like, thinking about. Um, that's true of all of my videos, I guess, to some extent. But here I have less formulated thoughts. Um, something that struck me in that AI video from Tristan and Aza, um, that, I mean, lots of people are sharing around. They know uh, PVK um, also started getting into it a little bit. Um, Lance, Shari, yeah, um, Chad. So, what can I say? Something that struck me was they, they started kind of with the idea of, you know, we... Would we have known if we, before we invented this technology, that we would have needed, you know, let's say, certain laws? Um, they gave the example of the right to, to right to be forgotten, the right to privacy, obviously, is more generally. But, um, and that really struck me for a second because I was thinking, you know, well, in another age, we thought, um, you know, some of us still believe this, but certainly in another age, most people thought that God was kind of knew everything about them. Um, all the time, and they were never forgotten in God. And I mentioned this in my Nietzsche comment about the death of God, um, that, you know, if before God is kind of um, what, you know, we thought we kind of existed because we were in God's mind or God's will, um, you know, it was constantly sustaining the existence of everything, including us. Um, you know, so what's it mean for... You know, could, could, what would it mean, you know, could, could we petition God for the right to be forgotten um, or the right to privacy, right? I mean, this is kind of like a Jonah thing. Can you run away from God? Um, and, you know, what's the difference between that and, let's say, um, you know, the same things with AI? Um, and at first I was like, okay, well, the answer is kind of obvious there. This came up in, I think it's Ron, um, this, this, that's the name, that, um, in the discussion on the marriage crisis. Um, video that he just did with Eamon and Catherine and Paul talking about um, the camera and the, you know, the, you know, the book he won't write about, <laughs> I'll never get to write about um, the effect of the image in the modern age and the camera. And so I was thinking about this, right? Um, sorry, I'm just watching a bee trying, checking out my deck to see where he wants to build in a nest. Uh, cool. Um, so if you have the will or the right to be forgotten i mean you know that, that would be almost like a you know, thing that people wish to they could get from god um and here when we have this artificial deity um that you know we're afraid of will, of will know everything about us um you know we, we want to ensure that we have that right from it um at the same time um obviously these aren't these aren't deities they're not gods right um the ai um and a really good book about this is a, actually a piece of uh, young adult fiction um, from a series, I think it's called Scythe, but the, the second book in the series, Thunder, Thunderhead, um, was kind of about like when, when right, all the clouds merge into and become like a self-conscious conscious, like being that like, you know, is non-localized and surrounds the whole planet and interacts with humanity through all their devices. Um, but like it is a lot of kind of these really interesting philosophical, theological things where um, people, you know, debate how to relate to it. Um, it's aware of, you know, basically no one's religious anymore, but it becomes kind of one of the two religious options, right? Um, either don't be religious or you kind of worship the Thunderhead. Um, and there's kind of like these Luddite, like anti, anti-technology people that are around um, as the third option for religion. But that sounds kind of reductive because honestly it's a really good book um, as far as where, especially how it explores some of the theological issues involved. Um, so yeah, I, 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 and especially the parts where the, the AI is thinking to itself, um, like how, you know, it, it has these whole internal monologues about like, you know, the differences between it and, and God and what it would mean. And, you know, it has this um, directive. It, it, it's, it's not an evil AI. That's the interesting thing, right? It's, this is not, at least the books I've read so far, I don't know if it gets there, there in the, the end of the trilogy, but at this point, um, like, it's not evil. It's, it's not this like apocalyptic dystopia thing that's happening um, on the AI side. In fact, it's the humans that are the dystopia. The AI is actually like the good guy in many ways, but um, in many ways, it's not not totally clear cut. It's not like, but uh, there are good humans and bad humans, whatever. But the, 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 the powers of evil that be in the book are really coming from, the, some, from a group of humans. Um, but the AI does have this like, uh, what do you call it? 
like an, a universal directive of benef beneficence, um, right? So it has to be good, um, and it like has you know it's not going to like destroy humanity for the good of the planet type thing, right? But like it, it really is. Um, like well programmed, let's say, um, to be good, um, but it, like kind of debates what that means. Um, like, how how does one be good to all humans? How does one be beneficent um, to in each individual creature? Um, not just like humanity as like a global whole as a collective, but also keeping the collective in mind, right? So it has kind of both, and it's really interesting. Um, and there's a whole things about like you know it will. People can get temporarily suspended from like. Um, interact so even though it still collects data on them or whatever it like knows what's happening with them because it's omniscient in a sense um it also um like pe most people in this world right it's, it's kind of like imagine whatever they whatever the end result of chat gpt where everyone just goes to it and asks questions you know it's kind of like there as everyone's like best friend confidant um assistant helper um and some people use it a lot some people don't use it that much but um but one of the ways that someone can be punished in this in this world um, is that they it won't respond to them when they talk, um, and that's usually like a temporary temporary suspension, right? So you don't know. I mean, usually you know how long it will be. It's kind of like one of the parts of your like sentence um, is like you know, um, you know, you you don't you can't get answers from it for like two months or three months. And I was thinking about how this connects to like you know. I mean, obviously it's it's a very direct thing for. Um, like someone being cut off from prophecy, um, you know, what, what it meant. Um, I mean, we have this at least. Um, so, like, Abraham doesn't have prophecy um, after um, the binding of Isaac um, prophecies happen and after that whole thing happens and, like, why? Or Jacob doesn't have prophecy for, like, long stretches of his life. Um, and that, like, causes them, like, emotional... I mean, we, we see a lot of emotional pain and torment there and we have, like, a lot of exegesis and kind of pedagogical, symbolic esoteric lessons that we learn from a lot of a lot of that stuff um yeah so and this comes up also i mean this comes up even more clearly in the later prophets um jeremiah and isaiah and ezekiel so at the end of jeremiah and he you know like they the people ask jeremiah for advice they're finally ready to listen to a prophet and he has to spend 10 days um praying to god hoping that he's going to get an answer because like he doesn't know what to do he doesn't have you know he, he doesn't have a vision um and you know, and he's just waiting for God to like hopefully answer him and, and get get back to him. Right? But like, um, it's, always, it's just yeah. Anyway, that aside, there's also this other thing. So I was gonna say with Ron and this concept of the image, like yes, it's very reductive, right? So you the the the, the camera reduces us to like a single moment in time, um, and a single like vis what's visible. And I mean, especially if it's a, especially if it's a still image, but even if it's a video. Um, like, you don't know, like, you lose the whole kind of relational context, historical context, the internal motivations, like, everything. It's all, it's all about profilicity. Um, but then I was thinking, okay, so that's, like, one answer. That's an easy answer. It's very reductive. Like, okay, so, you know, God is different because God knows what's going on inside. He knows us much better um, than, like, what this one image does. And because we're not worried about the judgment, let's say, of the camera or, like, we're judgment of judgment of other people seeing, seeing the um, results of this camera. This is different than the Thunderhead example, which it itself um, knows people over their whole lifetimes and is collecting not just their images, but also all their behaviors. Um, it knows a lot of like what they talk about because it's a confidant, um, their prayers, right? Like it, it has access to all that. Um, and is that different and better? Um, or does that not change the, the problem? Would we still want a right to being forgotten or a right to privacy um, with that? as well and i think that right there's also these weird like in between stages we're not there i don't know if we'll ever get there i mean this is science fiction um but like the stage where um a lot of our behaviors can be tracked especially our online behaviors but even offline through things like um cameras and transactions and our how we you know where we travel and what we spend money on um you know does that give us a better fuller picture that therefore you know is more worthy of being judged on um you know or should we should we have a right to even then be forgotten um and it's interesting because i think right part of this is ties into the discussion I, last week about around you know something i i feel like right, one of the big problems is a commitment crisis and committing to like a project that's 400 years or a thousand years or whatever it is which i realize is someone i can't remember if it's pvk or i think it's probably jacob right who concentrates on like um you know, we should really have like cathedrals. We should be building cathedrals that are these multi-generational, massive projects. Um, not necessarily physical. I mean, I think 
to me, like Judaism itself is the cathedral, um, you know, making plans for hundreds of years um, by like, not necessarily, we don't have a telos of what Judaism should look like 400 years from now, but like a sustainable community that can last for hundreds of years um, through kind of its own basic accrued wisdom. Um, and kind of building that forward and making sure it gets passed on from generation to generation to generation, um, to me is that's the kind of that is the cathedral of Judaism. Um, okay, so enough of that. Um, but that's that's the whole point, is right. So the right to be forgotten. On the one hand, do you have, you know, you will individually your individual contribution to that cathedral might really be forgotten. I mean you know, 100, 150 years, 200 years down the line. I mean, yeah, now we're doing more and more genealogy and you can recover your ancestors from a couple centuries ago, but even so, I, you still, I mean, maybe they'll know your name. Maybe they know, you know, the date you were born, but there's there's some limit to the information, especially of the past. Um, now, of course, we have a lot more information about us. Is that a good or a bad thing, right? Is it good to kind of have this individual level understanding of everything? Or is that really, in some ways, um, do we lose sight of the cathedral because we're focusing on like each builder and like this individual thing? Um, and like, can we really keep track of it all, right? Because then you have come into explosion. Um, as someone who does genealogy, right? Um, I often have trouble, um, like for instance, I, I try to um, remember people's names when I'm doing the memorial prayers, which we do multiple times a year. Um, and, you know, when it was just one thing, when it was just like my, you know, of my great grandparents who have passed away and my great great grandparents. I could keep track, you know, um, and I kind of know stuff about their lives, more detail, right? But if you go another generation, another generation, another generation, you know, even now when I only have their names um, and relations, I can barely keep track of them all, um, especially at the top of my head. Um, but even even online, it's, it's, you know, I need, I need like software to help me kind of augment that, <laughs> that ability. Um, imagine if we have like the information we have today about everyone, right? So what about our great, 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 no, like three great, you know, great, great, great grandkids. You know, well, I have, do I have the right to be forgotten um, for good or bad um, is one question. And then the other question is like, should I exercise that right? Um, is it good for them to know who I am? Does it matter? Um, how does it play into this larger, like, you know, should they know of my goal to build the cathedral? Um, you know, that, that's, a, that's a good question. You know, I, I think um, there's, there's a lot of value for them to know, like, this was, this was a goal and value of their ancestors. And we, like, that we're trying to entrust to them as like this inheritance or um, or stewardship, maybe the better word. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Those are just all things on my mind right now. I'm trying to kind of work work out, um, you know, what it might mean, um, right? Do, 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 do we really want to be, have the right to be forgotten for both our good and our bad deeds, right? I mean, that's another question, right? Um, you know, it's one thing for them, me to tell them my goal. If they know every little good or bad thing I've ever done in my life, you know, talk, I mean, that's that's the kind of that's a form, you know, of, of judgment that we're we're afraid of from God um, and our and our descendants, depending on you know secular or not religious. Um, I mean, especially look at this. I mean, especially in this day and age where people's um, which has a lot of big focus on the sins of past generations and what that means for us. Um, and I think there. I mean, I, I haven't even, it just occurred to me, so I haven't, I'm not going to work it, I, I don't, whatever, I'm going to stop because this, this is a long enough video, but like, um, thinking about how the Bible deals with the sins of past generations, um, and kind of gives advice to current generations on how to process that might actually be something of use and something to think about. And the Bible has a lot about memory and remembering the past, um, and for the sake of the future, that I probably, that probably has a lot, a lot of, a lot of loose, useful lessons, but, um, yeah. That's that's a whole that's a whole other video. Maybe someone else will make it.